Hey everybody, thank you for coming to Stones of Zion ministry page. This video is going to detail as a separate testimony a vision that I had, an open vision and angel visitation that I had when I was 19. This was the, the first angel visitation I had ever had that I was aware of. I think, I think the Lord sends angels all the time and really angels don't really want to be seen all the time they, they want to help they want to do what the Lord says so don't get too obsessed with angels guys they're they're here for a purpose and they accomplish the purpose and then they get out they're, and they bring glory to God the entire time they convey messages um, but you need Jesus angels are a byproduct of your relationship with the king of the kingdom of heaven um, so Anyways, that's just a quick point for you. This video details a vision that I shared in the Stones of Zion formation page. This happened to me shortly after I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And it happened to me right around the time that I was really hardly pressing into God for what my purpose was in this world. After He had baptized me in the Holy Spirit and I had the ability to bring forth the gifts of the Spirit and baptize people in the Holy Spirit and just I was working in the gifts and I, I was just like God what what have you given me and what do you want me to do you obviously want me to do something so I have this angel visitation and I was laying in bed and I was relaxed and all of a sudden I go into it's like I was in the room, but I was in the spirit world, in the room, open vision. And an angel was in the room with me. And he looked exactly like the angel that I described in my heaven testimony that said it wasn't my time to see heaven yet, but my prayer would be answered in the future. That that angel, he, he looked exactly the same. Um, and he stood there and he handed me a scroll he handed he held it out he held it out and he said son of man eat this scroll and i was like okay i, I couldn't say no to him you know i ate it and it just went went down you know my mouth um and it i think it was bitter like it wasn't it didn't taste super good and when I ate it I saw America and I was above America and it was a map underneath me this is this has happened to me several times and I saw the Mississippi River first thing I noticed was split from the Great Lakes down to the Gulf of Mexico and Florida, a lot of it was underwater. The East Coast, a lot of it was underwater. The West Coast, California was, was pretty wrecked, I'm just going to say. It was a huge earthquake happened there too. It seemed like part of it was gone. And the, the ocean was up on the West Coast too more. And the Gulf of Mexico, the same. Like part of Texas was covered in water. It... The, the coastlines had moved in. America had had an earthquake and it had completely been shattered in half at the Mississippi River and obviously that affected all the rest of the landscape. And I'm living in Austin, Texas at the time where I went to high school and this angel, whenever I saw this, I'm like, what is this? And he goes, this is what is to come upon your land and then he started drawing a line north from Austin Texas and then east and he said when you are called to you will go here and I didn't even know where here was it was just north and east and it looks like 
you know, it's in the mountains, Tennessee, Kentucky, North Carolina. That's that's where Stones of Zion is is you know established. But I'll get to that. This angel drew a line north and east. He said, "You will go here." And he said, "When you get there, you will preserve and protect God's people, and you will lay the first bricks of Zion." And that was the end of that vision. And I came out of it. I ran and told my mom. She remembers it to this day. Um, drew a little scribbly thing in my journal. I've got journal entries of a lot of the words I was getting back then. And I just read one of them. And it's, it's profound. It's exactly... I, I realized the Lord wanted me to do back then what I have obeyed now to do. But he was asking me to do it back then, and I was just stubborn. Besides that point, this vision was so deep because I ate this scroll. It has formed so much faith in me that God is going to build a Goshen for his people in the days to come. And it has established that I'm called to be a formative part of that. And now it's actually happening. And I want to tell you that I am humbled before the Lord because that promise he made to me so long ago, I never forgot it. I, I've been telling people about this for so many years. It's unreal. All my friends in Christ that are close to me know about this. My brothers, my mom, my grandma, Everybody's been hearing me talk about this, and not in a fanatic way, just like, I saw this, and I believe it's going to happen, you know? I, I carry myself well in society. It's not like I'm obsessed and crazy-eyed about it all the time or nothing. <laughs> um, but I believe the Lord's going to do this, and He is doing it right now with us. And what, what's crazy is, and this, this is the part of this story here this vision that I want you to glean from in the sense of he made this promise to me so long ago and he called me to this task and I went my own way and all of it he used to beat me up and prepare me for the very task he first called me to and I want to testify of his grace in that I don't believe you can live in sin and go to heaven if you die in sin. So I don't think that if I, if I would have put it this way, if I would have died unrepentant in the lifestyle I was living like, you know, five, six, seven, eight years ago, in the past, the past several years I've really you know, God has cleaned my life up and I've repented. But if I would have, if I would have uh, died in that, I don't believe that I would have stood much of a chance before a righteous God. But I want to testify that because he called me and because of his grace that he knew I was going to be rebellious for a season, because he knew I was going to be a stubborn and I had a lot of humbling to come and I had a lot of dying to do. He wanted to kill everything in me that would oppose what he called me to do. And I invite him to kill me even more now so he can live in me. I want to be nothing, the nothing I already am before him so he can just be the everything he already is. I like that phrase. I just made that up. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that somewhere. Uh, but I'm just saying, I'm testifying of His grace and His mercy because He knew I was going to do all this stuff and He was with me the whole time. I was, I was ministering in dark places even when I wasn't fully obeying Him because His gifts never went away. They're without repentance. Like I would play a country show in a bar or a rock and you know country rock and roll like classic rock country all that stuff 
and I would minister to people and people would still come to tears and say that, you know, confess Jesus and all this stuff, you know, in the middle of those environments. So I, I still had the Lord. I, I just, I wasn't living in full obedience to him. And he warned me so many times and, and I ended up obeying. But I just want to testify of his great grace right now that he made a promise a long time ago. He knew what I was going to do beforehand. He kept me protected through it. He didn't let me go. And now I'm back at square one, right where he wanted me to be. And I've surrendered all of it. And I count it as nothing. So I just want to testify of that kind of grace of a God who sees all of our deeds, past, present, and future, and who is powerful enough to keep us, and who's power enough to, powerful enough to save us from our sins and save us from ourselves. And that is a profound grace. That's why Paul said, you know, great is the mystery of godliness. He, he really does bring us into the completion that he desires for us. So I, I want to recommend that anybody, anybody and everybody just goes ahead and surrenders now. It's really not worth wasting his time. And you'll actually feel a little bit sorrowful for it. So anyways, this vision happened. And this is the formation vision that created Stones of Zion vision. And it's being blessed so strong because this was an original word from the Lord to me. And I want to thank you for being a part of this channel. And I want to thank you for the giving you've done. Like, share, and subscribe. And, you know, when it comes to you, what this means, I think you just need to pray. You have to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, with the Lord yourself. You have to hear Him. But I can say, I can tell you this, that as the judgment on America culminates, if America divides Israel... There have been people that have connected the dividing of Israel with this earthquake. Um, Chris Reed just recently re uh, released that as well. And it, it fired me up because I saw this at 19. I'm, I'm 33 now. You know, uh, what is that? 14 years ago? And I was so young. And it was so profound. And, and he's, he's had people confirm it. I think Sadu Sundar has seen it as well. I love Sadu. There's been a lot of people see it. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to let y'all know that I had that experience when I was 19. And it's motivated me to form this ministry so I can yield myself to establish a Goshen for the Lord's people. And I submit myself to Him so I can. And I want to be here for His people in whatever way I can as these days continue to come upon us. So I love you all a lot. Thank you for listening. And uh, I, I know you may be fascinated with, you know, visions and dreams and all this stuff. And Joel, Joel says that these will happen in the end. And I was a young man. I saw a vision. That's exactly what Joel says. But I will say this, the Bible also says, wicked and evil is a generation that seeketh after the sign. Guys, seek after the giver of the signs. Seek after the person of the power. Seek after the love that's behind the miracle. And the miracles will follow. I love you guys. Y'all have a great one.